All right, so let's look at how this Hello World program works. And as you know, um, if I compile this and if I run this again, so hello world.exe, we, all we can see is that it outputs the text hello world to the screen or the terminal. So first thing that's happening here is we have this um, include IO stream part right here. And what this means is that um, there's a file called IO stream with a bunch of code that, that's already been written. And it's basically code that allows us to output stuff to the terminal or the command prompt. And what this basically does is it makes that code available when our program is running. So you might be wondering where this is located. And in our case, where it's located is if you go to the main GW64 folder and then include C++ and then whatever your version is, uh, we can see down here we have the IO stream file. So by default, um, when the compiler runs, it will look in this folder for this file and then it will import the code from it. So we can just have a look at this code as well. And then this code will be available um, when our program is running because it will be put together with our program when the executable file gets made. Then we have this right here. And this is a function because we can see the square, we can see the parentheses right here, and it's like JavaScript. That's how you declare a function. And then you have this int right here, and this is basically what the function is returning. So in C++, you have to declare what the function returns each time. And this function is supposed to return an integer right here. Then we have the name of the function, which in this case is main. And unlike JavaScript, um, you can't just type in code here and then expect it to just execute in order. In C++, um, all of your code or whatever you want to run first has to go inside the main function. You can create other functions and stuff and call them here, but it will always run what's in the main function as soon as the program starts. And this is from the start of the program to the end of the program right here. So whatever's inside the main function is what gets executed. So basically when the program runs, it will literally just run the main function immediately. And then we have the um, curly brackets and these basically say where the start of the function is and where the end of the function is. Then we have this STD out part and this STD part is a namespace and this is the variable name. So a namespace is basically um, a, bunch, a collection of variable names grouped together. And this is so that we can avoid confusion. So in C++, we can use um, the same variable names over and over again for different things, as long as we say what namespace they belong to. So for example, we could have a variable name called add, which is the name of a function. And let's say that it either adds an item to the list, or if it's a number, it's a function that adds two items together. So if we're using the number namespace, we know it's going to add two items together. If we're using the list namespace, we know that we're going to um, add something to a list. And this has been declared to use a standard namespace. And you might think that the standard namespace hasn't been declared here, but remember that we imported this IO stream, and inside this we have the standard namespace declared right here. And we have the C out variable, and the C out variable is also inside it. So it's actually inside this namespace std, as we can see. So it's basically telling it look inside the standard namespace for a variable called C out. And what it will do is it will look either in here or in one of these included um, things right here. And it will look for a namespace called std, and it will look for um, a variable called C out. And this C out right here is actually um, an object, and it's actually an object of the OStream class. And you might think the OStream class isn't in here, but you can see that the OStream has actually been imported here. So the code from the OStream class is imported into this, and then this, then it creates an object of the class OStream, which right here, and then it gives it back out here. And the OStream objects basically allow you to um, output characters to the command prompt in the terminal or whatever this default output is. And let's have a look at the O stream as well real quick. I'm not gonna go into this one in too much detail. But yeah, basically just think that this class is a, allows you to create objects that can take in um, data and then output it to a terminal or command prompt screen. And what we, they've essentially done here is they've created a, an O stream or an output stream um, 
object called C out. And the C out just means character out. And it basically has made it available so that we can import it right here. So what it's done is we have the C out object declared right here. And then we have an insertion operator. And the insertion operator just gives to whatever is on the left hand side, whatever is on the right hand side. So what it will do is it will give to the C out object, which is an output stream object, which is this right here. And it will give the string hello world like this. So it will give the hello world to the C out object, which is of class output stream. And then the, what this C out object can do is it will take in this um, string right here and it will display that um, into the terminal or command prompt. And you might also notice that in C++ you must end lines of code with semicolons and this is non-negotiable here. So you have to do it right here. Finally we have the return zero. And that's because this function right here is supposed to return an integer. The main function must always return an integer and in this case the zero is basically the exit code. So the return of the main function is the exit code which describes how the program performed. And exit code zero means that it exited normally and everything was okay. Which is why we're returning zero right here. So let's run this now. So um, if I compile this again, so what this is doing is saying it's saying use the G++ compiler, create this hello world.exe and create it from this right here. And then what this will do is it will look in the IO stream and it will grab all this code and then it will also look in this um, O stream or the output stream and it will grab all of this code. It will put all of that code together into like a special file that contains all the code we need. And then it compiles it into an executable file which is binary or zeros and ones that the computer can then read and execute. And if I compile that, that's exactly what gets produced. And by the way, if you want, if you just use the dir command, you can see what files are in here. And we can see the hello world.exe has been created. And then if we run hello world.exe, we can see that's exactly what happens. So this stream of characters or this string gets given to a O stream object called C out, which then displays it out into the command prompt right here. And then it returns zero, which is a normal exit code. And as you can see, our program has exited without any errors back to the desktop folder. And that's exactly how this hello world programs works.